Look for this logo for Honest Canadian Dairy. Hey, good morning guys. So today we're gonna try and finish up doing our first cut silage here. So I just got to uh, the other farm here where most of our hay fields are. So right now my dad, so right now my dad's cutting right now. I'm gonna go take over from him. So like I said, we already did about half of it. I'm just gonna make a video about uh, cutting and chopping. It's all the same process really. We're, we we cut, it's a 13 foot disc bind, and then we rake four swats into one, usually four swats into one. Sometimes we do two depending on the, how thick the crop is. And then, uh, then we chop it and bag it. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. So I've been cutting for quite some time now. Uh, usually this this spine and our fields are actually fairly smooth, all of them. 80, well not really 80, 90% of the time we do cut at about 14 miles an hour right now. So that is how fast I'm going. If you can look behind the disc spine, I'm not too sure if you guys can see uh, kind of like dust flying up. So it's not exactly dust flying up. This alfalfa in this field, and another field we had, it did get hit pretty good with frost this spring. So I'll step out in a few minutes and kind of show you guys the field of what I'm talking about. So the first few little inches, the first few couple inches of the plant are actually, they froze off in the spring, but the alfalfa well, would have kept growing after the frost. It didn't kill it. But that, that little couple, those few couple inches of the plant are still on the plant. And that is what is flying off through the disc buying right now as I'm cutting. So it would have definitely been nice to cut this stuff probably a week ago, but it just did not work out for us that way as we were working on our feed yard at the other farm, bringing in fill, which I will show you guys later on in this video, a little update about that. So, so definitely the plan right now, we're gonna finish cutting. And then I think my brother or my dad's gonna start raking anytime now. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. And when I'm done cutting this, I'm gonna go sharp that knives on the chopper. And then later this evening, we're gonna start chopping this stuff because it's not exactly very wet standing up. So, and we definitely want about the 55, 55 mark for moisture as we bag it. And it's very, very close to that already. Even it's, it's plus 30 outside today, extremely windy. So that's why I'm gonna hop outside and show you guys the alfalfa plants in a bit here. But I hope, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm not too sure, but we're gonna find out, so. Come down here and look at the alfalfa. So some of this stuff, it's, it got froze off. Also, as you can tell, there's been some bugs eating it. So we pull about a good chunk of hay here. So first uh, inch, inch and a half or something like that, got froze. You can see that. So the first inch and a half roughly got froze and that is kind of what you guys see shooting out of the disc bind that's getting it's kind of getting flown away in a bit so yeah it would have been nice to cut this boat a week ago but it just did not work out for us that way even still now this is kind of on time when we cut it's june 15th or 16th right now i can't really remember so and then this is what it looks like coming out of the disc bind We 
got rollers on our disc by not frails we like the rollers a lot better than the frails because we don't exactly do just dry hay we don't bale anything we chop absolutely everything we have done cutting hay here so now my dad and my brother it looks like my brother's uh, raking right now so he's gonna be done raking this in probably two or three hours roughly something like that and then we're gonna start chopping right away so I'm gonna go get this disc line unhooked then we're gonna run over to the chopper sharpen knives on there get that all ready to go I like to keep those knives really sharp especially doing alfalfa I like to keep the stems fairly cut well and then we're gonna go show you uh, our rake here and how it works and what we're doing First things first here to unhook this, put these safeties in. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand actually. Usually you need to get those safeties in there. So here's our chopper. If any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this on my story yesterday already. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna pop this cover up here, take this all apart. It's very, very simple. That's one thing I absolutely love about this Dion chopper. It is so simple to sharpen the knives on this. So we're gonna take these two screws here, unscrew them. Come on this side, do the exact same thing. And what we're going to do, we're going to lift this up, like so. Then we're going to take these two, loosen these two things here. And we're just going to take this cover and pop it up. So you can see this first knife right here, it took a ball, must have been a rock or something went through here. This first knife looks a little damaged. Also while I'm doing this, the tractor's obviously off. Safety first kind of look at the knives we are going to sharpen them anyways they need to get touched up so just like that we're ready to sharpen the knives just by pulling the stone back and forth across it and every two or three strokes i'll take this little uh these gears here and i'll just kind of pull it against this and what that does it'll drop the stone very 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 small portion at a time and as the stone drops those knives get sharper if that makes sense hopefully it does so what i'm going to do i'm going to shut the turn the tractor on get this spinning at 600 rpms and I'm going to start sharpening it. there that's what my brother's doing is raking this stuff I just finished cutting we are gonna start chopping as soon as he's done so I got about an hour ish to go grab some food or something but yeah what he's doing he's grabbing two rows 
swinging them over to the side and coming back the other way and swinging two rows into those other two that he put. So we're doing four into one. That rake is a right hand delivery discharge. Both rotors spin the same way. It's a very good rake, but also I don't really like that rake. I'd rather have a merger. Triples with mergers on the back of them would be ideal for us, honestly. Then we can just skip out the rake completely, do everything in one pass, but that stuff's not cheap. So we're just gonna do what we do here and work with it. So just hop to my quad here. I'm gonna go give you guys a little uh, update about our feed yard here. We're kind of filling in. So this is kind of what it looks like right now. Starting to kind of take shape a bit. We are actually bringing this up about three feet in some places. This is just such a massive hole here. So we've been hauling in fill for about three days straight now. Or three good days anyways. We still got the bulldozer here. He's kind of pushing it as they bring it in. So there probably is about a good, I don't know, 200 loads here already. And we're probably just over half done filling this in. We are making about 150 by 300 foot pad. So That big pile there, that's everything he pushed before that was all laying here. And this is kind of what it's looking like. So as you can see, there's a good three feet of fill there. So it's definitely starting to shape up nice. I'm gonna go show you exactly where we're digging for all this fill. Here's the lagoon, two and a half million gallons. That's gonna be a very, very fun video when we're emptying this. A lot of sand in there. Here, this is where we're digging all the fill for that area by the barn we are bringing up quite a bit so we definitely needed to find somewhere on our own property to bring haul and fill and luckily back here this is on a corner of our property we have practically a gravel pit but this is very very nice fill there's clay layer in there there's gravel we're kind of mixing some with some other stuff over there and this hole is just about half the size it's going to be by the time we're finished. It's about, uh, that's gotta be a good 15, 20 feet down, so. So one main reason why we're digging this is if we were to buy fill in from somebody, you're looking at about $220 a load. We guarantee we already got 200 loads there, so you guys can do the quick math on that. Definitely not cheap to buy fill, especially in such a massive area like that in such a low hole. This, we're just paying, a, some really good neighbors by the hour for his equipment to dig this out. And we, he got two tano trucks here hauling. We also have a dump trailer of ours we use sometimes. Right now we're busy chopping, so he's just going with both his tandems and doing what he can for now until I'm able to help again. So yeah, this is the massive hole we're digging. So this is where I'm gonna end today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to chop some silage now. See you in the next video.